I'm Ford Cavallari, uh, president of NUMRA, and this is our May 12th meeting. Uh, to, uh, clear to everyone what meeting you're at. Um, and um, I hope everyone has a copy of the agenda. Everyone signed in. Um, I want everyone to remember in order to vote. Um, uh, you have to be an active member. You have to have come to two meetings in six months. And uh, you need to uh, check in each time you come to, to track it. So that's very, very important. Um, I want to also mention, as always, we are video being videotaped uh, by Matt Monte from Waterfront.com. Uh, does just a great job uh, all the time, and uh, he also um, does a great job embarrassing folks like me to, because I have to see the silly things that I said. So um, I um, we have uh, we have uh, uh, our our normal um, committee reports. Um, we are going to have a discussion at the at the end of the meeting, and I hope that a lot of people can stay. And some people have asked the, the very legitimate question. You know, we have this this very um, thorough process for uh, for neighborhood uh, uh, feedback for zoning appeals and liquor licenses. But what about these uh, crazy things like uh, 88 North Washington Street, where the um just hosted a meeting about a hotel that that uh, that is proposed, and it goes through the BRA process. And of course, everyone knows Lewis Wharf is another example of a, uh, a project that goes through the BRA process. And a lot of folks uh, having, particularly, and this is the funny part, particularly folks who have been on an IAG, the Impact Advisory Group, that is the BRA's mechanism for uh, neighborhood feedback, uh, supposed mechanism for neighborhood feedback. Um, a lot of the folks uh, that are on that panel that realize how non-interactive it really is, they've been asking me, well, what can the neighborhood groups do, you know, not just in our neighborhood, but all the neighborhoods, if the BRA is running a project? And that's what we're going to discuss at the end of the meeting um, in the last part, Lewis Wharf and other North End BRA projects. So we're going to overview some of those projects. I'm going to tell you about the new part of our website that focuses on those projects and collects as many documents as we can. And um, historically, um, you know, BRA has done its stuff, and the neighborhood associations and the, the mayor's office of neighborhood services for the smaller things have done its bit, our bit for uh, for uh, liquor licenses, entertainment licenses, and uh, zoning variances on smaller projects. But it's it's increasingly uh, becoming clear that we have to uh, become more vocal about some of the BRA projects as a neighborhood group. We have done that before on an extraordinary basis. Not necessarily extraordinary. We've done it before on a on a on a case by case basis, and we'll do it again. But what I'd like to discuss with the entire membership is uh, a way we can formalize that and actually create what what I might call an IAG overlay process, where we do something while we shadow the IAG and the BRA, and we make sure that we're voting on things even if the BRA never takes a vote. So that's going to be an interesting discussion. I hope uh, I hope a lot of you stay around uh, for it. Um, as far as the president's report goes, one of the things that I, I like to do is tell you about some of the stuff we're doing with other neighborhood groups uh, in, in the ATCO um, uh, group. Um, one of the things that we've talked about the last several times has been uh, liquor licensing, how the process, um, the liquor licensing uh, uh, board has, has a bit more of a, um, you know, a, they've, they've been rushing things through a bit, a bit more quickly than, than they have. Um, the thing that we're um, talking to all the neighborhood groups about is you know, how we can interact with that the board to sort of try to slow things down and make things a little more normal. One of the things that, uh, that um, we've been discussing very actively is all getting together and coming up with sort of a standardized list of the things that we think need to happen in, in the various cases. You know, if a liquor license is upgraded uh, rather than being new, if it's transferred into the neighborhood, if it's a new license, um, if it's a new license, that, if it's a license someone's purchasing, um, what kind of notification needs to happen? Which of these circumstances are going to trigger uh, a, a discussion in our group and in other groups? And what is the time period uh, that discussion will happen in? And, and you know, you you guys may all think that's crazy, but the city you sort of used to have a. Um, 
uh, at least a guideline as to what they thought that the timing would be on all these things, but it's really fallen apart uh, as of late, and uh, we're trying to we're trying to get that back on track. I'm confident we will be able to. We've been working well with Jerome Smith and that group, but but the but the issue has been um, that it's just still not quite right. Um, uh, so all the and the, the Echo Group is you know us, Back Bay, uh, Beacon Hill, West End. Uh, Fenway, uh, South End, Bay Village, um, all getting together, and we're, what we're going to do is we're going to try to standardize this. And I, and I, and I also want to note, uh, you know, Munich is having an election um, this Saturday, and I'm hoping that those people who are elected on the council will also join in the process, because I think it's sort of crazy if, you know, there's a license transfer, and we think, as do almost every other neighborhood association in the city, you really need to have residents weigh in on a, on a license transfer, someone transfers a license in. But Munich uh, might not think, oh, well, that just should pass because it's just a transfer, it's not a new license. So we need to have, we, we think we need to have a, a sort of a, a, um, a, a level playing field, everyone playing from the same playbook, and we are gonna embrace um, and encourage Munich to, to join that process and getting things standardized. Because if it's not standardized, it's just you know it's chaos, and uh, we've we've experienced more than our share of chaos here in the um, As far as uh, the BRA activity goes, uh, uh, we'll obviously discuss a little bit of that at the end. But I did want to I did want to tell everyone that all of our letters and, and uh, the emails that you sent, all the things that were uh, sent over to the city council to the uh, uh, to all the other stakeholders to the mayor. I think really paid off because um, I was a little skeptical when um, when there was a quote unquote compromise of six years that it was sort of going to be just like you know well it'll sh shoot up to ten at some point later. Um, but um, I'm encouraged that um, the city council, um, led by Michelle Wu, has actually reached out to a lot of the neighborhood groups and asked for input into an oversight process on the BRA. We have provided them a lot of uh, information. Michelle Wu has sent a letter to Brian Golden and there will be six month hearings uh, that the BRA will hold uh, to, uh, to make sure that, uh, uh, that uh, they're, they're tracking to the, some of the commitments that they made. So it looks like there are gonna be real hearings and, um, and I think that that's a very positive sign. Um, and the other thing that I thought was very positive is uh, you know, the BRA um, hasn't really changed the stripes, uh, a lot of us have said. Uh, that was just um, um, uh, shown by a uh, zoning change that they tried to push past the South End on the Boston Flower Exchange. They wanted to rezone it from light industrial to something that could support, I don't know, maybe a sports stadium. Uh, and they just, they just wanted to just push it through. And some of the city councilors have used uh, their new found uh, power in the new agreement with the BRA to basically call a foul, uh, force a council hearing. So there's gonna, ha there's gonna be a city council hearing before the BRA board is able to vote on a zoning change for that area. So it's, you know, it's like progress that we're making, but it's progress nonetheless. And I think it was driven by uh, an outpouring of, of neighborhood um, um, initiative, and I thank all of you guys for, for doing that. Um, so I think I'm going to wrap up the President's report on that, uh, and that note, we'll come back to some of those issues later on. Um, why don't we do the, the reports in the order that they appear, which I don't always do, uh, but I'll ask the membership report be the next one we talk about. Mary. <coughs>
the Greenway uh, has installed uh, an internationally uh, renowned artist's work, Ai Weiwei, on the rings. I hope you've gotten to see, if not the, the actual sculptures, the spectacular photos by Matt Conti uh, that he did of those. They were really amazing. Um, that's uh, a temporary, all art on the Greenway is, is temporary, uh, so I hope you get to see that this summer. And you might have noticed uh, new art is up just in front of the Mark Bennett State School. It's called High Tide. It's by a local artist. Um, and it's uh, really quite beautiful. So please go and enjoy that. Um, and the tree inventory that uh, the volunteers for the Parks Committee group is, uh, uh, is working on. We have finished our count of the tree wells in the uh, North End. Uh, we used uh, an older map, the most recent map, which is a beautiful, uh, provided by the city uh, for uh, party volunteers got out there in the, the rain and cold of April and counted all the tree wells uh, in the North End to make sure that if there is a tree well, there's a tree there. Um, and as you know, there are not all of them. So uh, our preliminary count, we haven't um, confirmed this information, but we're pretty, pretty sure about this. Um, 13 of the previous tree wells have been paved over. Uh, there are nine dead trees. And there are 31 empty wells, or wells that have stumps in them, or wells that just don't exist anymore, even though they're on the city map. Um, so we're going to uh, look at this data. We're going to share this data with Sal Lamatina, who's been a huge um, champion for uh, our group and for the, the parks in the North End. Um, and we're going to try to get as many of those tree wells filled with trees as possible. So um, in general, for parks or, or trees, if you have any questions or concerns or uh, want to know anything about that's going on in the parks and then are then please contact me. Um, and that includes anything about the Greenway. Um, my email address is robinr at newra.org. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions or uh, include you in our parks and open spaces meetings um, once a month. Um, and that's my last note. The Tuesday, June 7th meeting um, does have to be postponed. So um, we will post uh, the date that we're postponing it. Uh, too, but um, it can happen on June 7th. Great. I, I do want to congratulate the group for doing the tree inventory. It was sort of tedious work to go and find all the trees. Uh, but um, it, those of you who are interested in it, there's a little map. The little map that Robin referred to, the older map, is actually on our website now. We, we put it up uh, so that you can see you know, that we have some trees. Uh, and, and actually, um, a lot of the trees that are not on streets that are uh, listed, uh, listed there, that's sort of the next wave, and, and a lot of those trees are gone. So, you know, we need to, we need to save our trees. And that's great that uh, the group has, has done that. And Sal Alamatina is now the chair of the Parks Committee on the um, City Council. So that's one of the reasons that he's leaning into this a bit more. And has been very helpful and has come to some of our meetings, and we're grateful for that. Um, the, um, the ZLC. Yes. Yeah. Past and to come, we had a ZLC Zoning Licensing and Construction Committee meeting on April 26th. There were two items that were discussed, three Stillman Place and five Jackson Avenue that are on tonight's agenda for a vote. Uh, the ZLC meeting to come will be May 24th, and the only thing so far uh, will be uh, Monica's Pizza at 130, 130 East Salem Street, I should mentioned briefly that Nura voted uh, in February of last year to support the addition of takeout to the grocery store. Uh, the ISD, uh, ISD apparently uh, noticed that the takeout uh, was to be associated with the basement uh, around the corner on um, Noise Place, which is uh, that the, the legal use for which is dry storage. So there has to be a change from dry storage to restaurant uh, in order to attach 
a takeout license to something that is appropriate to a tax <laughs> And uh, that's about it. Well, uh, statistics for those who are interested. Uh, NURA has written 14 letters to the uh, Board of Appeal and the licensing boards uh, in the past year. That is, the, uh, a year ago, uh, May. Uh, seven of those were uh, votes not to oppose. Uh, those were members' votes at, this, at meetings like this. Two were, uh, five were no objection letters by the executive committee, and two of the 14 were letters in opposition by vote of, of, of the members here. And that is the DLC committee report. Fantastic, thanks. And during the last uh, the updates and discussion, I know that we're going to talk about parcel nine, but also maybe then you can tell us a little bit about 88 North Washington Street, which I'm sure is, is a fun thing. But we can do that later. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe, maybe there's nothing to say. Early for that. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Folks should take a look at Matt's website. Wasn't there a yeah. posting today about yeah. yesterday's about meeting, meeting on the hotel proposal yeah. at 88 yeah. North Washington? Yeah. So take a look at that. That's good. It's like a popsicle. Popsicle. Um, yeah, um, great. One one thing I want to say about the DLC, uh, um, uh, just because um, it, some some questions came up regarding the the curious changes of mind that ISD had on whether or not the takeout license for Monica's needs to be associated with this or that. They did, you know, in fairness to Monica's, the ISD sort of changed their mind midstream on that thing. But I, I just want to make absolutely clear to everyone who's listening to get for. To, for us to ask someone to come to a ZLC hearing or a regular hearing, or a little, let's say give a uh, petitioner an opportunity to get neighborhood support by coming to those meetings, it's real simple what the entry criteria is. If the ISD, the if ISD issues a um, um, a refusal letter because they're, you're out of you know uh, zoning and you need some sort of uh, relief from the zoning board of appeals. That starts the process. I mean, that's the only thing that starts the process. That always starts the process. It's really, there's not really a whole bunch of subjective, like, oh, why do we have to do this? Because it's, that's always the process. Now, that, when I talked about the liquor licensing um, um, standardization that the neighborhood groups are hoping to, to show to the liquor licensing board so they too can become standardized. Um, you know, there's less need to do that with Zoning Board of Appeals because they've actually gotten better over the, the last year. I know that everyone here thinks that, you know, um, the newer style might be to just say how the city is getting worse and worse and worse. But, you know, some places get worse, some places get better. Um, I think the BRA is on a bit of an upswing, and, and, you know, I never thought I'd say that. Um, so I was hoping I would say that at some point. But, but certainly um, the ZBA has been, I just think that they sort of get the star for a, a, a group. I mean, they'll basically tell um, folks who try to go there around the neighborhood process, no matter what neighborhood it is, no, you know, put your brakes on, go to the neighborhood and show us that you've done that beforehand. And that's really the way we'd like to see more city groups operate. That's uh, very encouraging. So I just wanted to say that so, so as to be on record. Um, I'm going to ask uh, for our last committee report, David Marks with the always popular public safety report. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Always good to see a great turnout. So we had the May 2016 North End Waterfront Public Safety Meeting that took place here last Thursday at 6 p.m. So I have some pretty, pretty decent news. Part one crime, once again, defined as robberies, larcenies, assaults and batteries, et cetera, et cetera. Citywide is down 1% right now, year on year. And in this district, A1, which not only includes the North End, but several other parts of the city, it's down 5%. Um, in particular, larcenies, auto thefts, larcenies from motor vehicles, and robberies, amongst other crimes, the reported number of incidents for each of those crimes is down. There were two larcenies within the last 30 days, roughly, so basically last month, uh, one of which took place at about 1.30 p.m at 22 Hanover Avenue. Three male suspects were suspected of allegedly stealing a package. Um, three males matching the descriptions of the suspects were stopped by the police at North Square, all of whom became a bit nervous when they were asked by the police if they had indeed stolen the package. All three of them denied committing the crime. Through the use of modern technology, they were able to match the UPC code, the barcode, 
um, with an invoice, and it matched the stolen $250 shirt. A 15-year-old male suspect was arrested. The second larceny that took place was at 420, on April 21st at about 10.30 p.m. at 435 Hanover Street. This was a roommate situation with two females. Some of the female victim's clothing was allegedly stolen by her female roommate. There was a larceny from a motor vehicle on April 28th at approximately 5.30 p.m. at 1 Stillman Street. The victim reported that her 2005 Jeep was ransacked. Three handicapped bikers were stolen from within. There were, two, there were two arrests, the first of which was the for, for the aforementioned package theft incident. And the second one was in regards to a roof deck party at 443 Hanover Street, which if I'm not mistaken, has been known to be a problem property for quite some time. And this was on Marathon Monday, so police officers responded to a loud roof deck party, like I said. Upon arrival, there were numerous Suffolk University students in attendance at the party. One male tenant was issued a violation for keeper of a disorderly house and a 22-year-old female tenant was arrested for disturbing the peace, disorderly conduct, resisting arrest, and assault and battery on a police officer. The dean's office at Suffolk University was to be notified about the incident, and I have no doubt in my mind that they will follow up and handle up with much. Hang up with much. But last but not least, Bova's Bakery, yes, believe it or not, now has security detail. On Friday and Saturday nights from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., as well as those Sunday nights that immediately precede a Monday holiday. I actually ran into him on his first night about a week or so ago. I was shocked to see that. They can't find the police to fill the detail. So kudos to both of us for obviously that cost money and for doing it. Hopefully that will have some type of dent because we always know there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of activity over there and it's open late, you know how it is late at night, we're hungry and whatnot. As always, last but not least, I should say, the public safety meetings, unless otherwise noted. First Thursday of the month in this room at 6 p.m., so for next month, that would be the week of Memorial Day, so Thursday, June 2nd, right here at 6 p.m. Hope to see you. Thank you. Great. And um, the last thing I'm going to do before we get into the agenda is um, I want to ask for uh, the public officials, City of Boston, State, or other public officials to identify themselves and um, say anything you want to say to the uh, folks here. That's all you want to say. <laughs> okay. Excellent. Excellent. Um, any other folks? I guess the, uh, the folks representing uh, other city councilors and uh, ONS are uh, enjoying the uh, nice evening tonight. <coughs> Maria has um, other, another area besides the North End, and I think she mentioned sometimes she can't make these meetings because the West End falls on the same night, so she has to alternate them. Yeah, so we'll see her next time. Um, it's good to know that she's just not on a lounge chair. <laughs> <laughs> not that I thought that that was the case, of course, but it's just such a nice, what I'm trying to say is a very nice thing. And we'll try to get out of here early if we can. I always say that. <laughs>